welcome to Dinger Diary. I'm JP, your host for this tremendously terrific episode number nine. Today I'm going to try to determine how much training is too much for your youth baseball superstar. So sit back, relax, and let's get into it. We all know eight to 12 year olds hitting on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, doing fielding lessons on Tuesday, pitching lessons on Thursday, and weight training on Saturday, and then practicing and playing games all in between. There are varying opinions on how much training is too much. For our purposes today, training is going to include practices, games, training that they're doing on their own, or with a personal coach. I spent a few hours researching this topic this week. I wanted to know what the doctors say about how much training is too much for young players. What I found was that not all doctors agree about the amount of training in general for youth players. But all of them do agree overthrowing is the main cause of most youth baseball injuries and throwing should be limited. Overuse is the cause of most growth plate issues in young players. Overuse injuries simply means they're training too much. Some doctors said two hours a week of training was enough, and some said depending on the type of training that the kid is doing, five days was just fine. So there's really no consensus at all among doctors. Uh, among, amongst doctors. My son, who's 10 years old, has free access to a baseball training facility seven days a week. There is no reason he shouldn't be there five days a week, and he'd probably like to be. Personally, I don't allow him to hit more than a couple of times a week. That includes practice and games. He might throw one 25 to 30 pitch bullpen in practice a week, and he might strength train maybe once or twice a week, maybe. Usually, most of this is accomplished the same couple of days in an entire week. When I was growing up, very few players under the age of 16 were lifting weights. Today, that has changed. You see more young players strength training than ever before. There are different opinions on what age kids should start weight training. I won't tell you what age your kid should start weight training, but for my son specifically, a very limited light weight workout is something I'm fine with. I believe there is a limit for what his growing body should endure. Growth plate injuries, labrum injuries, and little league elbow can be crushing and sometimes never heal properly. Almost all of these types of injuries are caused by overuse. They're just playing too much. I went through this with my oldest son and his shoulder hasn't been right since the eighth grade. I learned my lesson the hard way. I won't make the same mistake again. All of the doctors do agree with limiting young players throwing regimen. Little League, USSSA, Perfect Game, and almost all others have implemented pitch counts because the study showed too much throwing was detrimental to a child's arm health. It's a good idea. About 10 years ago, I was invited to an event to hear a local Boston Red Sox scout tell young players the ins and outs of getting recruited and what it takes to get drafted to the MLB. It was a really informative presentation until the end. The scout proceeded to crush the dreams of every player in the room by telling all of them that the Boston Red Sox would never draft anyone in the room. He said by the time Florida kids get ready to be drafted, their arms are already deteriorating. More than half the MLB teams have decided the same thing. Few MLB teams will waste good money on bad arms. How many Florida born pitchers who played year round as a young player do you see in the MLB? Not too many. Now you know why. I make an example that parents and players can understand about overthrowing. Most composite bats have a lifespan, and so does your arm. A DeMarini bat, for example, may last about 5,000 hits, give or take. At some point, that bat is going to break from overuse. 
your arm is built the same way. It has a throwing lifespan. It only has so many throws in it until it will no longer work. And since there's no college or MLB scouts at any of your youth baseball games to see you pitch, why waste it? If they were there, they'd probably tell you to stop pitching anyway. So why waste the number of throws in your arm when it just doesn't matter? Why not save the throws you have left in your arm for when they really matter, like when you're trying to get recruited by a college? I hear parents say all the time, well, if my kid doesn't play or train, he's going to fall behind. Do you realize that 75% of baseball players in the United States only play baseball in the spring and summer? Most players don't step on a baseball field from November to April. That's almost six months without playing a game. You don't need to take that much time off, but every doctor is going to tell you that rest is just as important as the training. You must incorporate time off into your training program. Another reason I don't allow my son to train excessively at 10 years old is the possibility of burnout. In my plus 20 years, I can't count the number of kids who really had a possibility to go far in this game who just quit. When you ask them why, and if they don't say injury, they say because baseball became too much like a job and it was no longer fun. Do not be the reason your kid burns out of the game. Dr. Owen Farley, an independent researcher and an adjunct professor at the University of Cincinnati, did a study interviewing over 500 Major League Baseball players. His study concluded that the amount of practice the world's best baseball players practice per week was only two hours. We could all learn a really good lesson from this study. So, how much training is too much? First of all, do not listen to anyone whose livelihood is based on training your kid. The more training they provide your kid, the more money in their pocket. Of course they want your kid training every day. The only opinion that should matter are those with a medical degree, preferably specializing in youth orthopedics. And since every kid is built differently, you should probably ask your kid's own doctor for some guidelines. There is no one size fits all answer to this question. You are the parent and responsible for the training regimen of your kid. If your son is complaining about a persistent injury, it may likely be from overuse. Shut them down. If you ignore those warning signs, you only have yourself to blame if the injury gets worse. In a future episode, I will be interviewing some highly respected orthopedic doctors to get their opinion on this topic. So stay tuned. In the meantime, get your kids some rest, talk to your pediatrician, and prepare your son for the future by not worrying so much about the number of hours he puts in today. Be sure to hit the follow button on Instagram and the subscribe button on YouTube. That's all for now. I'll see you next time on Dinger Diary.